and in 15 minutes we will tell you all about Luis Nishizawa and his art. Today I am surrounded by the work of Luis Nishizawa, a prominent Mexican artist of the 20th century, famous for his landscapes, prints, sculptures, murals and drawings. Born in 1918 to a Japanese father and a Mexican mother, he was always curious about both of his cultures. One key characteristic of his work is the syncretism of his Japanese and Mexican culture, which can be seen in the way he portrayed his Mexican landscapes, with soft blues and purples reminiscent of Japanese woodblock printing and of his poetic oriental expression. Nishizawa's artistic training began around 1942, the year he entered the Escuela Nacional de Artes Plásticas in Mexico City. Formerly, formerly known as the Academia de San Carlos, he studied there for five years with distinguished professors like Julio Castellanos, José Chávez Morado, Alfredo Salce, among many others. Some of the many places he captured in his landscapes are the Baricutín Volcano, Chalma, the Mezquital, Tepoztlán, Santa Maria Regla, the Valley of Mexico, Chiapas, among many other places. Some of the paintings we have here were painted in the open air, a practice that Jose Maria Velasco had already done when traveling all around the country to capture the most beautiful landscapes in Mexico. One of his influences is Ando Hiroshige, who exhibited his work at Bellas Artes in Mexico City in 1937. It was in the 1960s when he visited Japan for the first time, where he learned more printing techniques that he used in Mexico to portray different subjects including Maya hieroglyphs, which can be seen here in our gallery, where there are symbols of the Balam or Jaguar and of the cosmovision of the Maya people. And today, we're very happy to be able to have some of his work in our collection. And now, we go with Maggie Davis from the Japan Information and Culture Center. Hi, my name is Maggie Davis. I am the Digital Media Coordinator at the Japan Information and Culture Center, Embassy of Japan in Washington, D.C. Every year, we celebrate the National Cherry Blossom Festival. The festival, which commemorates the gift of 3,000 cherry trees to the city of Washington, D.C., is an annual celebration to honor the lasting friendship between Japan and the United States. In 1912, the mayor of Tokyo, Yukio Ozaki, gifted 3,000 cherry trees to Washington, D.C. as a symbol of friendship between the two nations. Miss Eliza Skidmore, the author of a travel journal who was deeply impressed by the beauty of the cherry blossoms in Tokyo, had campaigned for years to have them brought to D.C. She urged First Lady Helen Tack to have the trees planted along the Potomac. Now every year, the public parks along the banks of the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. are covered in gorgeous blossoms. We hope that you too get to enjoy this beautiful gift from Japan to Washington, D.C. Thank you, Maggie. Throughout history, cherry blossoms have been a symbol of friendship, endurance, and fertility that have inspired many artists. The Cherry Blossom, or Sakura Festival, reputedly every year at the beginning of spring in Washington, D.C., commemorates the 3,000 cherry blossom trees that have the mayor of Tokyo donated to the United States in 1912. These trees are over 100 years old, and every year, they bring thousands of tourists to the U.S. capital. The blossoming of these trees celebrates each year the friendship between the U.S. and Japan. Like D.C., Mexico too has flowering trees that decorate its main avenues and that has now been appropriated by Mexicans, landscape urbanists, designers, artists, poets, and writers. And when I say appropriate, means that these trees are actually not from Mexico, but from Brazil and South America. The name of this flowering tree is La Jacaranda. Yeah. 
Japan's foreign minister as Tetsuguro Matsumoto, an immigrant who had been living in Mexico for many years, for advice on a feasibility of cherry trees adapting to the city's natural condition. Matsumoto explained to both governments that cherry trees were unlikely to bloom because they required a much more abrupt change in the temperature from winter to spring than of course in Mexico City. Following Matsumoto's recommendation, the idea was discarded. But Matsumoto's recommended to President Álvaro Obregón in 1920-1924 that jacaranda trees be planted along the city's main avenues. Tosugoro Matsumoto had introduced jacarandas from Brazil and reproduced them in his greenhouse. The climate was appropriate for the trees to blossom in early spring and according to Matsumoto, the flowers would last longer because the lack of rain in Mexico City during this season. There are many, many um, myths and legends regarding the jacarandas in Mexico, but maybe all are true or maybe there's some true in all of them. What do you think? The Kimberley Collection, which is the MCI's permanent collection, has Luis Nishizawa among its most represented artists with nine artworks. Three of them, including the beautifully enigmatic landscapes, Copper Canyon 1 and 2, are currently on tour as part of the exhibition Cultural Encounters, Art of Asian Diasporas in Latin America and the Caribbean, 1945 to the present, which is now on display at the San Antonio Museum of Art under the name No Ocean Between Us until May the 9th. It is foreseen that the exhibition comes to the Art Museum of the Americas in Washington, D.C. this summer. The Embassy of Mexico has also a number of Nishizawa's landscapes as part of the art collection of the Mexican Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Nishizawa's Japanese roots are best portrait in these beautiful landscapes, paintings, combining the serenity of contemplation and the boldness of some of Mexico's most famous natural landmarks, the Popocatépetl and Iztaccíhuatl volcanoes, El Teposteco Natural Park, among others. <laughs> 